This first article comes to us from the Journal of Abdominal Radiology. Endoscopic healing is a widely accepted treatment target for Crohn's disease, or CD. Despite this, ileal colonoscopy cannot evaluate disease proximal to the terminal ileum and can miss submucosal inflammation in up to 57% of cases. Thus, cross-sectional imaging, particular CT enterography, is critical for assessing CD activity. This study aims to compare iodine density dual energy CT enterography, or DECTE, to conventional CTE and endoscopic disease activity assessment in patients with CD. After multiple exclusion criteria, 33 patients with CD who underwent DECTE and endoscopy within 14 days of each other were selected. A gastroenterologist blinded to imaging findings evaluated the ileocolonoscopic images and endoscopic reports to determine the presence of endoscopically active inflammation. DECTE images were reviewed for active inflammation by two fellowship-trained body radiologists blinded to endoscopy and pathology results. Mean iodine density from DECTE had 94.4% sensitivity, 92.3% specificity, and 90.3% accuracy for the diagnosis of endoscopically active inflammation in CD patients. However, there was no statistically significant difference in sensitivity, specificity, or accuracy for the iodine density parameters compared with conventional CT interpretation. Despite this, the authors concluded that normalized iodine density is a reliable figure in defining endoscopically active CD and may be considered as a CD treatment target as a surrogate for endoscopy. This next article is also from the Journal of Abdominal Radiology. One concern about neoadjuvant chemotherapy for colon cancer is avoiding unnecessary treatment of low-risk patients through accurate radiologic staging. The role of pretreatment CT for colon cancer includes detection of distant metastases and local regional staging. Due to multiple factors, this local regional staging is challenging with a steep learning curve. This study investigated whether staging and radiologist confidence can be improved by repetition and by receiving training and feedback with an emphasis on overstaging. 45 patients who underwent pre-surgical CT and colon resection through the MATCH study were selected. Five abdominal radiologists interpreted imaging for T staging on a scale of 0 to 4, in staging, and reading time. They first read five cases as they normally would during everyday practice to establish a baseline accuracy, after which they had a 45-minute lecture on CT staging for colon cancer. The radiologists then interpreted 40 cases over four weeks. After interpretation, some of the radiologists received feedback with comparison of their performance to histopathologic data, while some of the radiologists received no feedback. The ability to distinguish between T1-2 to versus T3-4 to disease improves significantly with increased number of reviewed cases. In this study, incorrect staging was more frequently caused by under rather than overstaging. No improvement in detection of lymph nodes was seen in any of the radiologist groups. Interestingly, longer reading times and lower confidence in staging were seen in the group receiving feedback, possibly due to more detailed assessment and raised awareness of imaging limitations. This study ultimately suggests that experienced radiologists can improve diagnostic performance in local regional staging of colon cancer on CT after training and repetition. Anal fistulas are a relatively common anal rectal pathology which can be excellently demonstrated on MRI. It has been proposed that 3D MRI acquisitions may be an alternative to 2D acquisitions and could be optimally combined with other sequences to characterize anal fistula. This study investigated the effectiveness of T1-weighted volumetric interpolated breath hold examination, or T1-vibe, and T1-weighted turbospin echo, or T1-TSE sequences, in assessing anal fistula prior to surgery. This prospective study selected 102 patients having been diagnosed with anal fistula after multiple exclusion criteria. These patients underwent MRI examination, which included both T1-vibe and T1-TSE sequences, after which the images were reviewed by two independent radiologists. Various MR imaging characteristics of the fistulas were described for preoperative use. Surgery was then performed by two anal rectal surgeons with surgery considered the gold standard for evaluating fistula. The authors found that the T1 vibe sequence was superior to T1 TSE in accurately diagnosing complex fistula, in addition to having the advantages of thinner slice thickness, shorter acquisition times, and higher image quality. The implication being that T1 Vive is more valuable for preoperative planning for anal fistula. This next article comes from the American Journal of Radiology. The detection of tumor deposits in non solid organs is critical for proper staging, treatment, and management of malignancy. This study compared the use of neutral versus positive oral contrast material for the detection of malignant deposits in non solid organs within the abdominal cavity on CT. 
After a selection process, this retrospective study included 265 patients who underwent an abdominal pelvic CT exam, which showed no suggestion of malignant deposits, referred to as the study exam, and a subsequent CT exam performed within six months that did show at least one definite malignant deposit, referred to as the follow-up exam. Of these 265 patients, 100 received positive oral contrast, and 165 received neutral oral contrast. Initially, one radiologist retrospectively reviewed all imaging to identify study exams which had malignant deposits and assigned the deposit to one of seven anatomic compartments of the intraabdominal cavity. This radiologist also graded the adequacy of bowel filling on a scale of 1, being very poor, to 5, being very good. 18 months later, two radiologists reviewed the study exams without reviewing the follow-up exam and recorded the presence or absence of malignant deposits for each of the seven compartments. The negative predictive value for malignant deposits was 65.8% for positive contrast with adequate bowel filling, 45.2% for positive contrast with inadequate bowel filling, and 35.2% for neutral oral contrast. Thus, positive contrast was superior to neutral contrast in detecting malignant deposits on non-solid organs. This detection was further improved with adequate filling of the bowel. This last article comes from the Journal of European Radiology. Small bowel obstruction is a common pathological entity that is most often caused by single adhesive bands or matted dense adhesions. Inadvertent enterotomy, or IE, is a complication of surgery for adhesive small bowel obstruction, or ASBO, which increases patient morbidity, including lengthened hospital stay, higher complication rates, and increases mortality. This study aims to identify CT imaging features that may be associated with occurrence of IE after ASBO surgery. After exclusion criteria, 169 patients with surgically treated ASBO who had CT scans available were se selected. Various characteristics of the patient's imaging and surgical reports were analyzed by abdominal radiologists and digestive surgeons, respectively. Patients who had a higher number of prior laparotomies had a higher incidence of IE, and IE was more frequent with patients with matted dense adhesions versus single adhesive bands. The authors found that two CT features were predictive of IE, diffuse intestinal adhesions, defined as long adhesions of bowel loops to each other, and an acute transition point angulation. CT features which were found to suggest protection from IE were the fat notch sign, defined as an oval fat density at the transitional zone corresponding to the extrinsic extraluminal band compression, and mesenteric haziness. Using these CT imaging features, the authors developed a scoring system to stratify the risk of IE.